to Empowered. I'm your host, Jessica Flynn of thejessicaflynn.com, and our show is on a mission to unleash local wisdom for widespread impact. We are committed to inspiring positive change and empowerment within our small community and beyond. Our next guest's adventurous spirit and zest for life has taken her to the farthest corners of the earth. From kayaking with monkeys in Thailand to summoning Mount Kilimanjaro and completing a 50 mile ultra marathon, her life is a testament to pushing boundaries and embracing challenges. But her passion for adventure doesn't stop there. The amazing Jen Walker is a mindset coach empowering heart-centered entrepreneurs to tap into their limitless potential and make the impact we're all meant to in this world. Jen's high energy, positive approach shifts perspectives and helps individuals harness business as a vehicle for massive personal growth and social change. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming my very good friend and mindset coach, Jen Walker. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so great to be here. So great to be here. I am. I always introduce you as the amazing Jen Walker. That's not in your bio, but it is in my head ingrained because it's how I see you. And I am just so excited to have you here to share you and your insight with all of our viewers. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. So um, as an entrepreneur, so grateful and, and really attribute a lot of my growth and success to working with you. What originally drew you to this niche of working with entrepreneurs? Yeah, great question, because I didn't start there. Mm. I actually started as something that I like to call a purpose coach. It was where I was in my phase of life, just really uh, interested in what's driving me, what's my purpose, what's my why. So I started that way, and then I actually became a relationship coach, believe okay. it or not. And I worked with, I did a group coaching program with 30 women. Um, all about love and relationships. And then I started to notice trends, patterns, themes that were emerging. And even in my group of 30 women with relationships, my favorite were the ones that actually, through the three months together, created and started their own business. Interesting. Yeah, and mm. I noticed that also with the purpose coaching and, and, and. So I kept on doing these different things and I, what arose for me was this interest in the energy and in the conversation um, that I was having with entrepreneurs. So I just full tilt went in that direction. So perhaps when you're feeling really good and you're developing personally, creativity is sparked, therefore ideas and energy to activate ideas. Yeah, and what I noticed, and so even right now, so I do work with entrepreneurs, but I also say that I just work with a person interested in an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. And so what does that mean? To me, that means that entrepreneurs are always looking for new, different, creative ways, innovative ways for solutions, for solving problems. So I really enjoy that type of conversation. I think it leads us to something, I guess, purposeful. So mm -hmm. there's something that we're going towards, which makes clearing and um, just shifting things in the mindset so much more meaningful and um, impactful, like interesting to do because we're going somewhere. So yeah. what that can look like is somebody that's really interested in um, solving problems in their own life or seeking solutions seeking solutions in their family, community, world, or business. Hmm. Yeah. And you've been um, a mentor and a speaker in actually our youth program yeah. to talk about mindset. And that just simplistic understanding of a, an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset being something that means that you're open and wanting to solve rather than lament, maybe. Yeah, you mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. It's, it's like something like I like to call like an alive life. Like, mm. we, you know, this precious life that we're all been gifted, like there's, it's an adventure. And uh, just to see that spark and, and what are we interested in spending our time, our money, our effort, our energy towards. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I really enjoy, uh, the people I work what with. What a beautiful space to play and work in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I enjoy yeah. working yeah. with <laughs> those people, yeah. So when you are working with entrepreneurs, what are the kind of some of the common challenges you're seeing entrepreneurs these days struggle with? Yeah, I was asked recently uh, by a client of what even got me here in my own entrepreneurial journey. And actually the word that came to mind first was compassion. 
Mm. And I joke with some clients, like just like like put some compassion bomb on it. Um, so there's a lot that we can be doing, and there's uh, we can't do everything. Um, I notice that a lot of entrepreneurs, and I love this about them, it, they're ambitious souls, and most of them want everything done yesterday. <laughs> As an entrepreneur who also works with you, I'm also receiving some coaching in real time. Yes, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, and just to, to really see their brilliance as much as I see it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this thing called life, I, a mentor of mine once said about entrepreneurship, it's just a game, and if you're not playing it, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So having fun with it, we're going to constantly be creating, innovating, failing, switching gears, and just to have fun with it all, compassion as we create, um, that's the kind of conversation that I'm really interested in what I feel is very valuable mm -hmm. to entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I know one of the concepts that you tap into when you're supporting entrepreneurs is rapid brain change work. Yeah. I've been witness to it. It's incredibly powerful and incredibly efficient <laughs> for those of us entrepreneurs yeah. who want things done. So can you tell us about how you discovered this model and, and what it is? Yeah. So this is where I'm going to get really excited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so as you know, I'm a ferocious learner yes. and I'm constantly studying and learning new things and kind of seeing how everything comes together in cross sections. So I've not just done one uh, NLP course, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, I've done mm -hmm. a bunch. I've not just done one hypnosis program, I've done a bunch. Uh, rapid resolution therapy, somatic practices, uh, psychosomatic therapy like Hikomi, energetic models and practices. So I've just looked at everything and put it all into a system. And I think we're at this really exciting um, revolution actually in mental health mm -hmm. we know far t we know so much more about the brain than actually what's being applied right now in in uh, in psychology and co coaching so there is this niche so I am obsessed with rapid uh, fun fast and effective brain change work that is looks very actually different than what's out there right now. Mm. Um, but you are seeing what's coming down the pipeline, essentially. Yeah, once we understand the brain, it can actually be very simple. Um, and we can access something that has been troubling, that we're looking to clear, and completely take it out, put it back in in a different form, and we can still recall what has happened. The circumstance would still be there, but, the pers but everything around it, the relationship to what has happened or what has been imagined will happen has completely changed. So are you kind of doing a little bit of psychology, psychotherapy, like it's, it's all the study of the brain, right? Yes. So big basis in, in neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. yeah. What I love about your approach as well is you have a science background, yeah. you have some medical and hands-on work with, with body as well. So yeah. I think the wisdom that you bring to this new age of how we're understanding the brain is really exciting to witness as well. Mm -hmm. I get so excited when Jen Walker is going on a course because I know the whole community <laughs> is gonna get an up level. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important too that um, people who are in a role like yours are out there constantly learning, lifelong learning, and then sharing that wisdom. And I think before I worked with a coach myself, I was like, oh, life coaches are for, I don't know who, I was very judgy about it. Yeah. But it's really someone who helps you to continue to learn and really is compassionate about you as the individual in your lived experience. And as an entrepreneur, it's a very unique and challenging lived experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the other component of, I think, your wisdom is how you encourage your clients, your community to reconnect with intuition. Um, so how is following your intuition? Or, you know what, can we start with your version of a definition of intuition? Yeah, sure. Um, and I don't know if I would necessarily define it. Um, so let's just start here. Everyone is intuitive. So we all have intuition and it's just like flexing a muscle and getting into relationship with our intuition. 
So it, it, it's like if you look at a tennis player and one of their arms is just completely jacked up and muscular, so they're working that arm over and over again. So intuition is just this internal, well maybe this would be a definition, just this internal compass that we all have. Mm -hmm. um, and it's guidance, it's wisdom, it's knowing that might not be sensical, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It might not make sense to us, but it's just known or felt and it actually might be some inconvenient truths. Mm. You know, uh, <laughs> yes. I, lo I love that quote. What is it? Um, uh, easy choice is hard life. Hard mm. choice is easy life. Okay. So sometimes the intuition is leading us to make some hard choices or to have some of those a tough conversation. Shines light on things that we don't necessarily, oh, I liked when that was in the dark corner. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So for those who, again, like myself, struggled to tune in, to find it, uh, it's a very powerful connection once you find your intuition. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the tools you use to help? Love this question. Yes. Love this question. Because when I think of making a decision, I think of a head, heart, and gut decision. Okay. So even like focusing our minds on those three areas. So the mind is very rational. It might come up with some experiences from the past or some things that we know. So that's great. Also, the mind is really great for asking questions, not receiving answers. Oh, oh. <laughs> so keeping that in mind, the mind is really great at asking questions and not for the answers. And where the answers are, are in the body. So the heart, um, the heart and through heart coherence, so just even now and people watching this could just uh, focus on their heart right now as they start to breathe slower and deeper into their heart in the most enjoyable rhythm. So as we do that right now, we're n noticing that the energy is moving from our head to our heart, just as we focus on it alone. And as we do that, we get into our heart center. And the interesting thing about our heart is our heart uh, is, I believe, the main point of intelligence. Mm. So there's signals going from the head to the heart and the heart to the head, and more signals going from the heart to the head than the head, head to the heart. So it's the main conductor. Right. And it actually goes to all the other organs. And so we've kind of been in this misconception that decisions are made up here when really they're made you got it. from here and here. So we're going to continue this conversation after the break. We're going to tap back into our tuition. Jen will help us find it. And we're also going to speak a little bit about how language informs our experience. So stay with us and we'll be right back. Empowered. I'm your host, Jess Glynn, and we're in the midst of an incredible conversation with Jen Walker, a mindset coach for entrepreneurs. And Jen, you are teaching us about rediscovering and reconnecting into our intuition. So often we think we're making decisions from the head, and but what you're saying is what we should be leaning into and learning about is making decisions intuitively and listening to the cues in our bodies. So we got to, there's cues, there's heart cues, there are head cues, but there's also information coming to us from our guts. 
You got it. Okay. Yeah, so again, so just remembering questions are really good for the head. So asking questions in the head and then going to the heart for like, a, another way I like to look at this is like, does this give me more power or less power? Mm. Like thinking about something. So there's something out there called applied kinesiology. And we can actually do muscle testing uh, to show us like what is right and wrong for us. Wow. So all so your body's telling you. Oh, all the time, yeah. all the time. So there's fun ways to do this, uh, just to attune that intuition. But this is happening within us all the time. So it's it, it's one of the biggest exciting tools that we have that we have with us, within us all the right. time. And can you take us through a little bit, like how do we test it out at home? Great question, <laughs> great question. So and, and so I would say there's heart and then I also think there's gut. Mm -hmm. And gut I would say is more instinct. Those, you know, you, when the, the hairs like stand up on, on the, uh, you know, just, yeah. you just know like this is right or wrong. So and that's you think the, with animals, animals have all these instincts and we are an, an animal, animal species. Yeah. You yeah. got it. Yeah. So when we're working with this, um, just getting curious and even that question alone and just looking at body language. So start studying it mm -hmm. in actually other people um, when they stand up a little bit taller. Uh, versus shrink. Mm -hmm. So do I feel taller or do I feel shorter? Do I feel bigger? Do I feel smaller? Do I have, does I feel stronger or weaker? More power or less power? A really fun exercise to do that people can do right away is something called like a human pendulum. And so what that is, is just standing and get nice and relaxed, take a few breaths in and out, and then ask a yes or no question and just notice the sway of the body. Mm. So typically, and you might wanna ask which way for me is yes. Typically for people, it's a lean forward. Right, I want to pursue that. I you, want to learn more. Yeah. You got it. And then a lean backwards would be a no. So it's, a, it's, it's called a hum, human pendulum. And it's our subconscious mind is actually in our body our all knowing, our knowing is on our body. Mm -hmm. So our body will give us cues constantly. Start noticing in other people first mm -hmm. and then start noticing it in yourself yeah. and it will become very apparent. And I gotta say, sometimes it's just really inconvenient and it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And uh, just play with it. Play with it with the low risk uh, activities. So if you're driving down the street and you're like, oh, like I'm feeling like I need to turn right, but I always turn left here. This doesn't make sense. This is not how I go home. Well, just play with it. Because mm -hmm. you might turn right and then all of a sudden you see a store that's always been there, but you haven't noticed it yet. And that was the exact store that you needed to find for the exact thing that yeah. you were looking for. Or friends on a bike ride and you needed to reconnect, it, you yeah. roll down your window and yeah. yeah. So play with it with low stake uh, activities yeah. um, and then it, it will become, start to become very interesting and valuable to play with it a little bit more. And what I've had to remind myself along the journey of, of tapping back into my tuition is sometimes it feels a little like, okay, this is like pretty woo. But the science that's coming out to support, so this kinesiology where we're actually like muscle testing, the tracking that we're able to do on the brain to show what kind of neurons are being sparked. I love that all of this stuff that's ancient wisdom that was with us that we've disconnected from is being shown in science. I think there's just more of a buy-in for some people when we can scientifically back up what we're learning or relearning. Yeah, I, I see it as like a bridgeway back to our power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time and science is modern day mystic. Mm -hmm. It's the way that we like uh, Western society have liked to organize our thoughts towards things. So as we dive back into science and we really get into, if we get into quantum physics, let's go there. Right. You start to really realize um, that we are timeless, limitless beings. And with that comes power. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, we can tap in, tune into a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. I see science as a, as a, a bridge back to um, the way we like to conceptualize things right. and get us back. Gives us a framework. To, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, these shows fly by, so I want to talk about all the things and share all of your wisdom with all the people. But if you could, in one to two minutes, explain to us how intuition, you've also done some study around a woman's in Freudian rhythm yeah. and how we can tap into this natural intuitive power 
and leverage it for business success. Yeah. Yeah, so the Infradian Rhythm, I discovered it by accident and by need. Um, I discovered it when I first started my business about eight years ago, and I hit a wall of adrenal fatigue and burnout. Mm. And I went for a walk with a good friend of mine. She was a very successful entrepreneur, and she also had a background in naturopathy. Um, and I told her all my story, my woes, and my energetics, and she's like, uh, she very slowly and softly said, well, of course because you're running your business like a man. Mm. And it shook me, and I had been living my life like a mini man my entire life. Mm. Um, and she introduced me to something with the moon cycle and just organizing my work around the moon cycle. And the moon cycle has different energies and different themes. And even that felt very relaxing and good to focus my mind around organizing my month monthly calendar with the moon. Mm -hmm. Then with more research, I got into the infradian rhythm and looking at my hormonal cycle that very much mirrored the moon. And so- We're all nature. It, right. Yeah. And it, it's something like when uh, I talk about anything energetic. So, you know, in talking about the infradian rhythm, uh, rhythm with women is one way to talk about this, like an energetic conversation. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm having an energetic conversation with someone, and especially with women with, uh, with the infradian rhythm, uh, I always say, you know, it's remembered. We're not mm -hmm. learning this stuff, yes. it's remembered. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it was in us all the time, and, and when we talk about this stuff and it's remembered, um, it's just reclaimed instantly, mm -hmm. and then we can play with it more. And the neat thing about women, and that everyone should know this, is our brain changes by 25% through the four distinct uh, That blew my mind when I learned that. Yeah. yeah. And it's really geared, so each uh, distinct phase is really geared for us and our brain to have different advantages and for most of my life I hadn't been taking uh, advantage of those advantages and more so than that I was working um, against those advantages and I think too previously and probably still going on but we we're looking at uh, those cycles as a disadvantage and instead of how powerful if you know where you're at and each unique phase offers each unique opportunities and you have different strengths in each week and i encourage everyone to go on to jen's website to explore more um, and follow along because you offer such great education um, in your trainings and on social but i also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about language mm -hmm. so when we are speaking to ourselves when we're speaking things out into the world um, why is language so important and powerful? Yeah, so there's actually interesting research that came out of Georgetown University about this. And I like to talk to clients about this and make a little bit of a joke. So right now, a day to day, we have between 70,000 and 80,000 thoughts per day. And 80% of those are negative. Just naturally. Just naturally. Okay. And 90% of those are on repeat. And so I like to joke that our minds are a little, a literal dumpster fire, <laughs> just so that we know like, yeah. oh, Jen Walker doesn't think negative thoughts oh, all the time. And it's, it's for our evolutionary uh, survival. Always be afraid there's a lion around the corner. Exactly. Yeah. So to predict and protect, this is how we got here. This mm -hmm. is how our lineage got here. So to know that there's a negativity biased is it's all within us and who we are not those thoughts. Mm -hmm. So how are we observing, we're observing those thoughts, so we're not those thoughts. So that gives us real power. And then with language, the research that came out of Georgetown University was that um, essentially with uh, what we speak, it has a 10 times more impact. And then when you look at something negative, it is a multiplier by four to seven. So when we speak negative things out loud, we are 40 to 70% more likely to predict and perpetuate the things that we're not interested in. Wow. And this is the really interesting part because although our mind will be in a negativity bias, there's one person in control of what I call these mm. knee flappers. <laughs> and it's us. Mm. 
Yeah. So we really get to choose the words that we say. Yeah. And there are certain words that give us more power. And there's certain words that put limits on us. And when we're conscious of those words and choose wisely, yeah. um, it, it's a real big advantage and it makes life a lot more fun. Can you give yeah. us an example of like, okay, here's how I used to talk or speak out about a challenge and here's how I could try speaking about it now. Yeah, I so I'll tell you some insidious little words because I actually think this might be of interest. Mm -hmm. Things like words like want, mm -hmm. try, need um, are all tricky words. So when I'm listening to someone, I'm constantly listening to the words that they say. And so, for example, if somebody says, I want this, I know that it's always out here for them. So it will always be out there mm -hmm. for them. So we're going to collapse that in a, a word that we can use. And you probably have heard me say this a lot, interesting. Yeah. I'm interested in, and it collapses that. Mm -hmm. um, other phrases, so I'm very mindful of my tenses when I speak. And that's really interesting because... It is interesting. It's so interesting. <laughs> because tense changes are everything in language. And when I'm coaching, what I'm actually doing is a conversational hypnosis most of the time, where I'm doing invisible tense changes that the conscious mind of my client won't pick up, but the subconscious mind, I'm co constantly rewiring it without them noticing it. Right. So for language, when we speak anything, rule of thumb, anything that we don't want to keep so something that we're not interested in currently having or having in the future, put a past tense to it. Okay. Um, also, anything that we over identify with. So anything that follows I am, you own. I am. We're going to take that for all of you on the edge of your seat. You are going to have to follow Jen Walker. And this is why she's the amazing Jen Walker. So wise. Thank you for sharing these little bits of so much of what you've studied, what you do, how you help entrepreneurs and anyone interested in personal and self-development uh, to see more guests like Jen unleashing their local wisdom for such widespread impact. Tune in again next time on Empowered with Jessica Flynn.